cold, blustery day here in Florida, right? So here's a, a couple things I wanted to update you on. The Compact 10 of Perfect CB. Now, you, if you haven't seen the videos that I've been doing just on my own time here, uh, you know, when I'm on 11 meters, right? Um, the original video on this antenna I did, I did some testing on it, made contacts on it. You know, I put it on top of my shed, use it as a base station. Okay, and it got some flack from some people that were like, well, it's just a scam. There's nothing different about it. Well, here's the deal. Uh, this antenna, it works, okay? And, and you can see, I'm gonna show you a sweep here. What I did was I replaced this mount, a nice new shiny mount, because the mount that I had on there, when I showed you a 1.4 to 1 SWR, people said, oh, it's junk, send it back. Now they didn't understand that uh, it could be the mount, or I told you it could be my vehicle or the way I have it mounted. So I'm gonna show you the scan right now on the rig expert i'm going to tell you about this antenna for a minute with the new mount here is your sweep right here i'll do it again right there 1.00 to 1 right at the lower sideband portion like channel 36 through 39 that's where i want it tuned right there and you can see uh, 1.00 at 27.36. So the mount that I had on there before was the problem. Um, you can get this thing tuned right to where you want it. Now, if I go up to 10 meters where I was using it, okay, let's call it right there. So you still have a two to one right there, but that's not as good. It's, it's, it's usable. It's not as good as having a 10 meter. You can't have 11 and 10 on the same antenna at the same time. You either tune it for 11 or you get the 10 meter version. But uh, right here, right? Bang, 1.01 to one. So really, I mean, every antenna is a compromise, right? That tar heel over here, that little tar heel is a compromise. Um, that how does that work so that coil there plus the radiator which i put a longer radiator on there that coil plus the radiator the coil goes up and down motor you know electrically the coil windings plus this equals the length for a resonant frequency okay for instance this one here starts here on the mount all right and you go up now you can see where this coil is from here and if you unwind that and measure that whole coil that whole coil here plus that ferrule and the radiator equals 11 meters not 11 meters long uh that would be what 100 100 and uh 100 and something inches you know four uh 468 divided by uh you know doing it on top of my head but you get the idea that coil there is uh better power handling than something like a say for just a regular well, Wilson uh, 5,000 or whatever, okay? Those Wilson or K400s or whatever, or oil-filled, listen, they don't make those antennas like they used to, okay? Uh, I'm not, again, nobody's paid me to say shit here. I'm just telling you um, why I actually think this is one of the best antennas I've ever used because, number one, I've been talking all over the United States, all over the world. I think I've talked to every state in the last week and a half from this truck with my president Washington, okay? And um, and you can, I'm gonna turn the comments on here. You guys can leave me a comment. You've seen some videos and it's nothing more than I have taken a break from HF and hand bands for a while because of, I, I've had more fun on 11 meters in my life than I've ever have on, on HF, okay? The conversations I have, the people I talk to, people I've met on 11 meters, it, the, the, most of them are all hams. The, they're hams. Uh, a lot of them are hams. The ones that aren't hams, though, I can tell you what, you'll have a more pleasant conversation uh, with them, and they tinker with things. They use antennas. They try antennas. They tune antennas. They tune radios. They do whatever, and nobody's out there. In, in, again, look at my videos in the past. You may say, oh, it's a bunch of people cussing and stuff. No, it's not. A, a lot of them uh, know me for, they say, oh, you're 382. It's, uh, you know, 382 in the mobile. Your ham radio concepts and yeah you know that's that's me but um they know me and they're all hams they're using different radios and strikers and icons and kenwoods and whatever great stuff so anyways back off the rant here this uh antenna if you want my honest opinion okay there's th this is not doing anything to as an amplifier or anything but this kind of gauge of a wire or or the space age looking coil here okay with the the, the hardware and the radiators di uh, diameter that's gonna handle a lot more power. They say 500, I've dumped about 300 into it all day long every day. 
and uh, no issues. It doesn't even start doing anything weird or nothing. Um, that antenna is going to have more uh, reliability with power with something this thick of a gauge compared to something like a little Wilson K40 on your trunk. Open that K40 up and look inside and you're gonna see this itty bitty tiny 38 gauge magnet wire wrapped around this little plastic piece. And I've smoked many of those with less than 200 watts, okay? They're not made the way they used to be. There is no real magnet wire, tiny little coil wires in here, you know, something like you'd see in here, you know, it's, it's or in here. Right, that's that's loaded. There's a load in here too, but um, and that Tar Heel over there will handle, I think, 400 watts, um, due to the size of the coil and everything. That thing, you know, is, is 25 for what I use it for. So, anyways, um, here's the question I have though. Now, Dr. Jack makes a 10 meter version. All right, um, this is called the Perfect CB. Right, and he has he also has the Perfect 10. Um, one that is just tuned a little bit differently for 10 meters. Now, your results may vary. You want to use um, the, the little eight millimeter nuts up there, or you know, bolts or whatever screws to loosen and, and maybe have to trim a little bit using an analyzer. Like I showed you, we'll show you a lot of what your antenna is doing. Um, but you know what's funny is, like I said, a lot of the, <laughs> A lot of the 11 meter guys and hobbyists up in the free band portion over in Europe and here in the United States. And man, those guys will get an antenna working. Unfortunately, there's a lot of hams these days that memorize answers and get on the air and they expect something to work right out of the box without touching it. And if it doesn't, they're sending it back. I will not mention any manufacturers who have told me, Eric, you gotta make a video. We're getting nothing but complaints and they didn't even open the instructions. Nobody knows how to even set up an antenna, you know, and, and, and a lot of companies got some flack for that. So I'm gonna say this, I put my seal of, of approval on this right here. This antenna, even though it looks cool and it's, you know, people are gonna notice you with something like that, okay? Uh, zero issues with it so far. I have smacked some trees with it. I have smacked a couple uh, Arby's drive through today. I forgot I had it on there. It's quite quite tall, 69 inches total. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's the new mount here too. The old mount, um, I had to, this is not a diamond either like that or a comet, but I tried to find the best one, the best reviews, cheap one, okay? But your results are going to vary. For instance, if I do have, there you go. So here's the old rusty mount that I had on there, okay? And uh, worked for a while with a small antenna on it. Okay, you can see there's a piece of red wire in there. What's that for? I could not get the thing to tighten. And I tried with the wind load to get that thing to hold. But bottom line is, see how that's rusting? You see how nasty it is? It's only about a year old. All right, that's, uh, that's what you get when you order cheap mounts. And somebody once in, back in the day, you know who he is, I won't say his name. You've seen him at every ham fest. I made a comment one time years ago and he said, Eric, there is a difference between this company and diamond. Give them respect. I do. This is not a diamond mount. This is not a comment mount, but uh, it's not an MFJ mount. It's a cheap one. Okay. Um, cheap mounts will do this and cheap mounts will give you different performance or bad mounts will give you different different performance and different tuning. Okay. Uh, looking at this side, man, it's getting cold out here again. I know you want cold? Come to Florida. You guys up north have no idea what cold is. Hi, hi. Yeah, 500 watts that'll handle right there, right? But that's, now this is a Diamond K400 mount and that's about three years old. Look at it, you see it? Three years old, okay? No issues with it whatsoever, right? And uh, <laughs> this one here is about a year old and you can see it looks almost identical. You'd think, wow, you know, it's looks identical, doesn't it? Same, same thing here, right? No, it's not, that's the difference. So be, you know, be uh, knowledgeable and know that a shitty mount could do something terrible for your uh, your tuning, okay? Um, last but not least, um, do you want to see the 10 meter uh, version from, from Dr. Jack? I haven't asked him and uh, I know that he said that a lot of people are already buying this antenna right here based on my videos. I guess I'm the only one who's made videos on this and showing it in operation. Uh, people are buying this already from DX Engineering and Ham Radio Outlet and stuff on the CB version, but not the 10 meter version. Uh, not too much. Now I'm going to ask you guys as hams, would you consider if I showed you how well it worked on 11 and even on 10 when I didn't have it tuned for 10 with the construction and knowing that this thing isn't going to rust apart because it is made 100% in the USA, hand tested, hand tuned, handmade. 
You guys always yelled at me. Stop buying China. Buy American. Nobody makes American anymore. That is made in America. I can guarantee it. And I can tell you that when I make a video in a year and a half from now, I'm going to show you that none of this stuff rusted apart. All right. Would you consider the 10 meter version or why not? I'm dying to know. Is it because CB operators don't care what's on their vehicle and they don't care what it looks like? Is it because CB operators know that any antenna will work or maybe, you know, whatever. Why would a ham not buy this antenna or why would they? You saw the analyzer sweep. You saw what I've been doing on this thing on 10 meters, on 11 meters, the way it is. Um, and should I obtain a 10 meter and put it on the analyzer and make contacts on it? Your comments below. But uh, I give this man my seal of approval. What a, yeah, I'm slurring, seal of approval. I love this antenna, great thing. Uh, great, great performance. And when you can get on a channel 11 on AM with just a couple hundred watts, man, and talk all up into Detroit and stuff with those big guns on this antenna, it's gotta be working. So there you go, 7.3.